Hey, y'all. Walked up to the uh, top of the pasture this evening. Funny how things can be quiet if you stop the hustle and bustle. Behind me is an old pear orchard. Now it's smothered with new growth and old growth. A lot of activity went went on there several decades ago. Old pear trees are still there, nothing but stumps, a little new growth, but no pears. Right past that was some good garden ground up here on the top. But, uh, start off of another week, huh? There it is, Monday. Hope y'all survived all the storms the last few days. We uh, have another round of them a little northeast of us, northwest, and I reckon we'll have some more along the way. We fared all right outside, I guess. <laughs> the garden survived uh, the three or four inch deluge there in the hour and a half that it came through. Didn't get much wind here, thank goodness. And it did wash out my, my old chicken compost bed there next to the garden. I reckon the pasture downstream needed some fertilizer, so it got it. <laughs> I realized how, how country I guess I've become. You know, that old roof on that house is uh, oh, it's several decades old. And uh, it's not my place, but uh, it's not a priority by the owner right now to get it fixed. We'll get it fixed eventually. But uh, right there uh, between Jordan and I's bedrooms, an old chimney that's never been in use. And the flashing has kind of worked loose on it. And on certain rainstorms, that water doesn't drain quick enough and makes its way into the house and normally it's not that bad maybe just a small drip the other evening when that uh, old storm rolled through uh, you know how you just get sleepy and you're half asleep in the bed and, you know do minimal activity to so you can stay asleep well i heard the drip start so i got an old bucket there in my room in case it happens and put that bucket up <laughs> next to me in that big old bed and try to go back to sleep and then another drip and then another one and the deluge was coming, so I had to get up. I chuckled. I said, well, I guess I'm, I'm a new kind of country. You ain't country to you. Try to sleep with a bucket catching rainwater in the bed. <laughs> but <laughs> we, uh, we got through it. We got up there and did a, a, a cowboy fix on it. I think it'll stave off any more leaks. Up there, I need to get some pitch and really do it right. But I think we've got it where it'll, where it'll hold for now. But... Uh, been kind of a trying week, and uh, most of you know uh, trials we're going through. It's a funny thing about that. I'm, I've learned you can uh, so many prayers and concern and messages and things of that nature, but it's struck me pretty hard how, um, and I've been guilty of it too, and understanding it now going through it. You can tell those that are reaching out that have been through it as well. The loss of a parent through it debilitating disease or maybe they've just been through it in similar circumstances they're the ones that'll text you randomly about every three or four days and they don't ask how things are going this is kind of obvious they just let you know that they're thinking about you and praying for you and uh, not trying to get into a big long conversation because there's nothing either one of you can do but sure is nice to know that somebody's just there and uh, I'm going to do a better job at that as I see folks going through it. I don't need to try to fix it. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's part of life. But uh, it's kind of nice just to know along the way that somebody's there. And, uh, of course, we know we call on anybody to, to help and do things along. But uh, it's just kind of kind of nice not to have to answer a bunch of questions. or, or uh, You know what I mean. Of course, there's time for information flow, and that's important. But uh, when you're just checking in, it's kind of nice just to just to know somebody's out there, right? I'll tell you, Sunday, uh, Kimberly and I was there in the room after church with Mom, and, and uh, she has her lucid moments, and she loves music, as I do. And I guess that's where I got it from, being raised around it. And uh, several of those old hymns were playing, and one kind of struck me pretty hard and uh, I guess music is a way to the soul you know and um, so often times we can look for the answers or try to find the 
good Lord's direction or voice and like old Elijah, remember him? Yeah, he was looking for him in the earthquake. He wasn't there in the wind. He wasn't there. The fire wasn't there. It wasn't until he slowed down a little bit and listened to that still small voice that he found that direction. Oh, Einstein had a theory that there was a time fabric that could be altered with gravity. And he meant it in a different term. But the gravity of life's finality really seems to alter the flow of time. I'd been picking dewberries this week probably. Now it really don't matter. But uh, just kind of redirects things. There was an old boy, turn of the century. He uh, was raised by traveling Baptist evangelist and a mama that played the organ. And uh, it's a different time in America and he learned how to play the piano and went out to make his own way in the, uh, about 1916. Called him Georgia Tom back then. He hit the Chicago jazz and blues scene with a force and I think he penned over 5,000 different songs, had a lot of influence on folks. Right in the jazz age through the 20s. There's always that calling, very talented man. In the 1930s, he returned to uh, life's direction and moved him in a way to where he left uh, that scene behind and began to focus his thoughts on eternal truths and began to pen some gospel songs, leaving the jazz behind. I guess that was about 1932. He just made that break and one of life's biggest challenges hit him. Funny how the sometimes the Lord finds you you're closest to him when you think he's the furthest away in the middle of grief or sorrow. But he would he traveled to uh, I believe it was Atlanta to perform a solo gospel concert there to revival. When he got a telegram, it said his wife had died. That's all it said. She was with child, their first son. He traveled back to discover his wife and unborn son had both died. Unbelievable tragedy. Knocked him on his feet, or off his feet. He searched for answers, secluded himself. And one of his friends that knew just what to do, he had shunned everyone and kind of withdrawn. Loaded him up one afternoon, a couple of weeks after the event. Took him to a music school sat him in a room with some instruments and left him there. He began playing on the piano, digging out chords and harmonies and just kind of meditating, listening for that still small voice that he thought had done an injustice to him in his life. And the melody came to him just as clear as day as he penned the words to a song that's been recorded by dozens of famous folks and sung by countless thousands and probably some of the darkest times of their life and it came on the other day they're on the uh, CD player and it had a different gravity this time y'all know him as Thomas Dorsey he penned the song Peace in the Valley and Precious Lord Take My Hand and as that song Precious Lord began to fill that little hospice room with my mother laying there full of faith. Just came overwhelming knowing that we've got a promise with our Father that he'll be there for us through these dark times that we consider as she prepares to go home. And it's a beautiful thing, even in her waning times, I'd stop by on the way to church and gave her a kiss on the forehead and she kind of came to and looked at me and she said, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Something about a godly mother, y'all. But it's tough seeing them pass. It's tough seeing them fade. There's no really good exit on us, I guess. But uh, sure am thankful of the heritage that was instilled in me. But listen to that song with, with new gravitas in the wake of that. And knowing where it originated from it horrible, horrible tragedy of losing a spouse and your son. He wrote over a thousand more 
good gospel songs that fill a lot of our hymnals today. I read where he passed of Alzheimer's in 1993. So it's good to listen to that still small voice sometimes when it's the darkest. Maybe there's a light on the other side if we'll just stop and listen and lean. Lean on him. 14 eggs tonight, y'all, and all is well. We'll call it an evening and hope y'all are able to make a difference in somebody's life this week and smile. And maybe reach out and see if you can take the old good Lord's hand and let him lead you through those trials. I know some of you are going through them, loss of a spouse or a bad report from the doctor. But, uh, we can get through it, right? This wasn't the end game. <laughs> that old corn's about to tassel out. And just keeps them moving. And that's something. Let me do a quick roll call and we'll call it an evening. All right, if I can get it up on her on the screen. Got chickens running at my feet here. <laughs> I'm gonna take a couple of those little baby chicks, I think, up there. Pretty open policy. I reckon I'll do that tomorrow morning or the next day, see if I can't get a, a smile out of mom. She she loves those little chickens. So there's uh there's Lily, how are you? Miss Alicia's checking in and Maria. There's Carrie and Ken from Abilene. How about that? There's Bruce Evans, a good friend up uh, Central Texas way. And Patrice in South Central Texas. Let's see who else we got on here. There's Miss Linda checking in saying, hope all is well it is. Appreciate those thoughts. And uh, Mike's checking in from Northern California. It's raining, huh? I appreciate you, brother. We all in it together, right? <laughs> all have to hold each other up. Dale's checking in from Coyote Flats. Where is that at, Dale? That's gotta be Texas gotta be surely maybe not i hadn't heard of coyote flats but you're there so it exists <laughs> good to have you yeah a little flooding up here kathy yeah aren't those uh, i don't want to walk out next to them corn stalks alicia because i'm short enough without them peeking over my head i'd disappear behind them at this point <laughs> thank you linda all right yeah music uh music is food for the soul isn't it <laughs> There's Carla in Springfield, Missouri. And Miss Nancy Black, appreciate you. Curtis, two sizes of zucchini, too small, weight two days, too big. <laughs> Boy, ain't that the truth. Uh, I had my Uncle Nathan, that beat anything i ever seen. Now, I'll throw away that squash when it gets big, the big old seeds in it. I just don't care for it when it gets all big and tough, but you couldn't get them squash too big to make him not want them. I mean, he'd eat them things when they as big as a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like them a little smaller than that. Hey, Emily, how are you? Miss Nancy, good to see you checking in. You bet, Bruce, that's uh, good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Alicia. Yeah, Kathy, how are you? Yeah, it's just something about them hymns. Y'all read an article about that sometime. There's all this new stuff, that's fine, it's great, but there's just something about them old hymns and, and it'll, uh, I don't know, just something about it. It's a whole different thing. Yeah, I guess you can mix it around. Uh, tomato tops transplants work out. Um, I had two that survived after sitting in the cups. I've got them up in the high pasture. Um, they're, they rooted and did okay. I don't know, uh, I'm sure they'll be all right. The, the little top heavy, obviously, with the, the deals. Now, the ones I topped, I said that, uh, mentioned that the other day, just for those of y'all that want to try that method. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily uh, applicable to a beefsteak variety because these are bushy and loaded down with tomatoes already. So they're putting on fruit bushy at only about, uh, what, two foot tall. A lot of these uh, tomato varieties get real viney and a little higher. So I can see the need to top maybe those varieties. But uh, let me see if I can show you here. This is one that, that I topped. Uh, you can see, well, maybe down here at the bottom and uh, of course it put off a strong shoot right here um it's blooming it'll do fine this is one i didn't top and uh i'm glad i didn't <laughs> it look it looks a lot better but it probably depends on the variety uh, i won't top any more of these beef steaks they they do fine on their own but boy they're looking good ain't they uh, and we've got them old tomatoes coming on there so won't be long we'll have to beat the blue jays off We'll have to see how that's going to work out. But I'm hoping I've got enough to where the birds can get a couple and I can have the rest of them. 
we'll pick them a little pink if we need to, but I reckon we'll we'll make it through. Um, they didn't have that old plastic netting back in the early days, so well, all there's all kind of ways. I I might even make Jordan stand out in the garden all day and wave at the birds. <laughs> reckon he probably wouldn't do that. Put, I, I could tie a couple of these chickens up out there to squawk at them, maybe. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hey, Terry, how are you? Uh, yep, that's right. Terry says, Mom's always right, uh, see, always with us right in her heart. Mine has never left me even in the darkest times. Keeps me going. It's blessed to have you. Send love, hugs, and prayers. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's right, Manuel. His grace is sufficient. Uh, let's see, Arkansas. Miss Brenda checking in. Good to see it. There's Miss Gina. And uh, hey, Debbie, how are you? <laughs> yeah, it has grown. Miss Debbie's gonna have to come help me pick some of that corn and these tomatoes. So uh, I'm about to get in there. I've got my my uh, pot and soil all mixed up. I'm about a week behind, but oh well, it'll be fine. But, uh, I'm gonna start planting some tomato seeds now for fall. I still got a hundred plants out there. Got no sense. <laughs> I guess I just like to see it grow. <laughs> There's Miss Charlotte. How are you, Nancy? Uh, appreciate you. And let's yeah, see. Debbie saying good recipe for squash pickles. Hey, you're gonna have to drop that off. I, I'm gonna have plenty, plenty squash. And those uh, those cucumbers are running like crazy. I'm ready for the peppers to come on. It's uh, it's coming. There's Miss Miss Benita Graham. Love her so. She's a dear, dear friend of my mother here, especially late in life. What a caregiver, what a blessing to our family. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Miss Terry, the maters are coming on, and the babies are good. <laughs> so all is well. Uh, had that old brown one jump off her nest, and thank goodness my friend sent me that incubator. I, I'm gonna have, I already know I'm gonna have a mess. I shouldn't even tell it on myself. I've got them all marked with dates, but we got all kind of different dates in there, so <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, it's hot enough now, you don't need an incubator just about. You just set them out on the Put it in the truck. Plenty. <laughs> oh, well. But we've lost some more white ones along the way. I think they're kind of reaching the end of their life uh, with all that genetic and hormone stuff and just too big. But I've, I've lost about four or five of them over the last week or so, the big, big white ones. Uh, I think we're down about 14. So these little leghorns are coming on, so they'll take their place pretty quick. But... Uh, I can rest assured that them white ones have lived a life of luxury for sure compared to where they was headed. <laughs> but it's just, just part of it. Just part of it. And all is well. Well, I hope y'all have a good evening and, and uh, have, a, have a good work week as we go through another one, right? We're blessed. Looking forward to my, my son coming down. I guess that's only about a week away next Sunday. And, uh, of course, Faith will be coming in for too long. We'll be looking forward to seeing her. Uh, love y'all appreciate you be the light make somebody happy and smile it ain't hard to do <laughs>